Postcards. I had a pregnant wife uh, and a, a nine-month-year-old kid, and so our, our kids were very close. We were just buying a new house. I got laid off. She wasn't working. And so I looked at her and said the most logical thing I could have, I'm going to start a digital marketing company, right? And, and, and apparently it worked out. So that's, uh, that's really good. And so we started Candy Box in 2008. But, but really, uh, like, you know, people say, well, why did you, you know, did you come up, how did you come up with this idea? What were you doing? Really, we were just responding to the needs of companies. Every company that I came across were launching websites because they knew they needed to launch websites, but were failing. If you were to ask most business owners where their website lied on their um, income statement, it wasn't really an investment, it wasn't an asset, it was, you know, it was just an expense. And it didn't make them the money that we were promised, right? For years and years, oh, just go online, go on you know, the Google and call Google and you're gonna start getting all this business. It didn't happen for so many companies. And so we started Candybox just so that we can make the web suite. In growing up in, 19, you know, I was born in 1984. Um, growing up, I saw 20,000 commercials by the age of five. 20,000 commercials. I saw commercials about everything. I, don't, I can't tell you how many commercials I, I've seen about tampons, and I've never bought one, <laughs> right? Like, we just, we just consume all this, all this junk. And uh, last year, I had the privilege of... Um, of listening to something my daughter said, and uh, uh, we were at my mom's house for Christmas, and it was it was it was beautiful, it was wonderful, and I put Door the Explorer on for her, and then all of a sudden, you know, she runs over, she's like, Dad, Dad, Door's not working, it, it switched to an adult program, so I'm like, oh man, so I walk over and I, I take a look, and she's like, it's a it's a it's a movie about toilet paper. I look up, and and now she's like, oh, it's something else now. I don't know what this is, and I look down at her. Her name is Grace. I'm like, Gracie. I'm like, this is a commercial. And she looked up at me and she literally asked me, she goes, Dad, what's a commercial? She's five, never seen a commercial her entire life. She's going to be one of the least marketed two generations and yet we still buy things. Most, uh, how, many, how many of us here have actually led or been part of a website project here? How many of us? You just, by raise of your hands, okay. Okay, so about half of us. Um, who here would rather have like a root canal rather than do that again, you know? <laughs> Maybe a few of us, right? It's, it's a bit of a painful process. And, uh, and the reality is, is that I find most website projects actually go wrong, not, at, like, not on the end finishing, but right at the beginning. You know, you, you go and meet the web designer, right? And he's like, I'm a really good web designer, right? And you go, okay, he's great, he's a good web designer. And then, and then what does he do? He, he issues that, that one statement that, that kills everybody. He says, just, just send me the content. We'll get it going. And you go, okay, great, right? You, you nod, and you think, of course, it's my business, right? I'm going to send you my content, right? And so you go home and then you think, oh, you know, crap, right? I've got to do something. So you open up Word and then what do you do? You start writing about yourself, right? Candy box marketing, homepage, right? The reason why I started Candy Box Marketing in 2005, like you just, you, you build websites completely backwards. Companies build them for themselves. Marketing managers build websites for themselves. Right? It's like just to, to talk about themselves, and yet customers don't care. They don't care about it. They don't wake up one morning thinking, I want to go read a history about a print store online today. No, that's not what they're thinking. Right? They're, they're looking, every single customer has unique um, needs and desires and wants. And as online marketers, our job isn't to wow them with who we are, but help them in their journey. This was a couple years ago. And so I'm going to show you what, what we have uh, had here in regards to old marketing and new marketing. So old marketing, this company, Digital Lizard, worked with an agency. They built a website, which they charged them a handsome $30,000 for. Then they decided to go into advertising. They were doing trade shows and banners and flyers. They're a print company, by the way, so they were getting you know, really good retail rates on print. I'm not going to tell you what their markups are. Right? And they spent $125,000 in advertising. They got 72 leads. 72 businesses wanted to do business, which gives us a CPL a cost per lead of $2,152 approximately. So it costs this printer $2,000 to get a new lead. That concerns me. I don't know if it concerns you, but that really concerns me, right? And this was a professional agency, so we went in not knowing what we were doing. We built a website, you know, we made 15 grand because we didn't have all the wonderful senior management and overhead and all that stuff. We actually made money on that $15,000. Then we paid $30,000 into Facebook and went to a very specific niche marketed group, graphic designers, of which at that time there was 436,000 graphic designers in the continental US, and we gave them relevant advertising for them to come to relevant pages on the website with relevant calls to action, and so we thought about the entire graphic designer journey. 
Now the results of this, we got 2,000 leads that year, giving us a cost per lead of $22.50. I called the owner once we found out these numbers. I said, how many leads would you like per day? He said eight. I said, okay. So we adjusted the pay dial and he started getting about eight leads per day. This is the type of marketing that companies need to do. It's smart marketing. It's connecting you directly with the end person. Now, let me give you a couple stats before I go into a little bit more about my book, because I got to set a premise here that this is absolutely critical. We look at the Canadian stats and we realize that our, you know, maybe our, our market isn't changed that much. Maybe our products aren't changed that much, but our consumer is. Okay? We have 88% of Canadians are online and 70% mobile on a daily basis. This does take into consideration babies. Okay? So everybody is online. 20% of our Canadians generate online reviews. There's 4.8 billion searches done per month in Canada. My demographic searches 43 times a day. 80% of those times, I don't even know that I'm doing it. I just do it habitually. Right? You just, uh, you know, you, you pick up your phone and it's, it's very quick. You just go find a Starbucks near me. You click the thing. It does its job. One of these places matching Starbucks looks fairly close to you. Right? That's what we do now. And so the, our, our consumer habits are changing. 62% of people buy products online. 93% of people go online for product information. And this isn't just like company information. If we take a look at uh, the online marketing timeline, this is where Canadian companies are spending their budgets. Oh, sorry, this is a uh, slide right before. Um, this is the online marketing timeline of the different milestones over the last 15, 20 years. My main point here, without reading through all the boring stats here is it's actually speeding up. It's not like this is a trend that's kind of you're easy into. If you're not into mobile marketing, um, we need to realize that we are now missing significant portions of the, the market that will never actually deal with our business. You need to give away candy. You need to give away candy. Every website needs to have a value proposition for people to take the next action. Every successful project that I have seen like really work online, has given away candy. What does that mean? It means that they're giving away digital products, PDFs, white papers, pricing, videos, access to something, something that the cu customer wants that they have to commit a little to be able to get a little bit more, even logging into different areas. If you don't give away candy, you give them no reason to connect with your organization. If you just give everything, and I'm, I am completely for giving a lot of stuff away, but if you, if you don't hold anything back, there's no reason for them to contact you, no reason for them to fill the form, and really your conversion ratio starts to go down. Think about how your business could benefit your customer by giving away candy. And the reverse stat to the, the generic contact us page is that 9 out of 10 Canadian consumers will give their personal information, their name and their email, for a digital good that they find valuable.